Wizards of the West Coast. Tapping out, slinging spells. I hate your deck. We want to give you the true LGS experience. We show up, sling spells, and have fun. Now meet our players for this episode. What's up everyone, it's Lynch from I Hate Your Deck. Ready for more spicy magic with spicy friends? Cause I love playing paper magic with my friends. If you really want to help support our show, consider joining our Patreon. It helps us keep making amazing episodes so we can keep this show going. And it's a great way you can interact with me amongst other patrons from around the world and have a lot of fun playing spicy magic in our Discord. Today, I'd like to play the Master Multiplied. It's a Universe Beyond Commander. Are you guys okay with the Universe Beyond Commanders Always. being played? Yes. Yeah, love Sweet. it. I'm excited to see those. Yeah. Let me give you a quick little rundown of what the Master Master Multiply does. He is a Time Lord for three. He has Myriad. The legend rule does not apply to creature tokens you control. Triggered abilities you control can't cause you to sacrifice or exile creature tokens you control. This deck is trying to create a lot of tokens, whether it's him creating tokens of himself that won't get died in legend rule and they won't exile at the end or sacrifice because of his ability. And I have a lot of other ways of creating other tokens that normally would be sacrificed or exiled, but as long as he's on the board, that won't happen. So I'm trying to overrun the board with tokens and it's on theme with what the master multiply does. For anyone who's watched Doctor Who, he multiplies himself. So I'm looking to get him out and multiply him and then his multiply is multiplied, multiply if I get to keep him on the board. <laughs> Whoa. Like it. it is a little slow, it's a six CMC commander. So, you know, we'll see how quickly I can get him out there. Oh, nice. he's a time lord. I'm looking to do shenanigans with tokens. What you got? I like shenanigans. What's up guys, I'm Vahan, back to play some magic with all my friends. Today I'm gonna be playing the Prismatic Bridge. So it's a two-sided card. The other side is a Sika, god of the tree, but I'm gonna be playing the Prismatic side, which reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or planeswalker card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. If I have it out, on my upkeep, it triggers, and I'm gonna go from the top until I hit a planeswalker or a creature. So the way I kind of made the deck is they're just like fun planeswalkers and really good creatures. Good stuff, but not really any dorks. So anything that comes up is gonna be impactful. So I'm hoping to get a nice board state and kill all of you. Sounds like fun. Hey guys, Sean, I'm back again, here to play some spicy magic as well. Today I'm playing Raga Draga, Gorgut's boss. Human boar, a 4-4 for two, red and green, so four on the floorboard. Each creature you control with a mana ability gets plus two, plus two. Whenever a creature you control with a mana ability attacks, untap it. And whenever you cast a spell, if at least seven mana was spent to cast it, untap target creature, it gets plus seven, plus seven, and gains trample until end of turn. You gotta pay the cost to be the boss. I'm looking to uh, play a bunch of mana dorks, then cast some pretty high CMC spells to then maybe do some shenanigans with uh, triggering to untap my dudes, tapping them again, kill you guys, and Bob's your uncle. That's the game plan. Hey y'all, this is Manny. Today, I brought to the table Magus Lucia Kane, my psychic witch, is from the Warhammer set. I really like it, it's spicy. So she's a spiritual leader. At the beginning of combat on my turn, I get to put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature. But here's where it gets good. Psychic Stimulus, I like that. I get to tap her, create two colorless. When you next cast a spell with X in its mana cost or activate an ability with X in its activation cost. This turn, I get to copy that spell or ability and choose new targets. Now, if I make a copy of an X permanent, I get to make a copy of that permanent. This is totally up my alley. It's tokens, X spells. I make big creatures. I also cast big spells. X fact. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey guys, we encourage you to always have a pregame rule zero conversation. We're all homies and friends. We all know that we got spicy stuff like Jewel Lotus or Mana Crypt in our decks, depending on what it is. We have consensually agreed that we're gonna have fun playing these decks. If you're playing with people you've never played with, make sure you have a good conversation to make sure your deck isn't underpowered or overpowered so you can have a good experience. I hate your deck. Let's roll to see who goes first. All right. Damn, two sixes two roll sixes off. Roll. Oh. Deep eye contact. Two, two, three. Oh, he got a no. six. Shots that was first. Nice. Does that mean I go last? All right, let's draw. If you're not five. first, <laughs> you're last. All right, I got seven. Draw, as per the rules, as I will play this Copper Line Gorge, it enters the battlefield tapped unless I control two or fewer other lands. So it enters the battlefield untapped. I will then tap it for a green, and I will play Iboreal Druid. It is a 1-1 elf snow creature, elf druid. can tap it and add a colorless mana to my mana pool. And then I will pass the turn after that. To you. Kill him, he's ramping. <laughs> I will draw. The bow reel is full reel. Play a reliquary tower. 
Tap one to cast a soul ring. Oh shit. Wow. He's ramping. Oh, okay. okay. All right, draw for turn. Play a polluted delta. Tap it, crack it, sack it, lose a life, get a bad land. Yeah, let me uh, ramping. That's <laughs> not ramping. <laughs> I'm fetching. There's a difference. All right, I have one mana. I'm going to spend that one mana. I'm gonna tap this, and I'm gonna cast a Commander's Plate. The Commander's Plate is an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus three as protection from each color that's not in its commander's color identity. I can pay three to equip my commander, or five to equip something else. And then I pass the turn. Draw for turn. Play a Wooded Foothills. I'll go ahead and pay life, sack it, and I'm gonna search for a Triome in my commander's colors. Ketria Triome comes into play tapped. Pass Ketria. the turn. Ketria for the Ketria. All right, let's untap and draw. I will play this Command Tower as my land for turn. I'll tap for two, and I will cast Ruby Daring Trekker. It's a one-two with haste. When Ruby Daring Trekker attacks, while you control a creature with power four or greater, Ruby gets plus two, plus two until end of turn, and I can tap it to add red or green to my mana pool. I'll then go to combats. I'm gonna swing at Lynch for two. Take two. These offenses will be noted. Ooh. Indeed. I will then pass the turn pass after that. Turn. Yeah. On tap, draw. I will tap Reliquary and the Soul Ring to cast Chromatic Lantern in Chinese. I knew it. That it was in Chinese? Kinda, <laughs> I did, yeah. I'll play a tap path to Ancestry and pass the turn. Untap, I'll keep draw. This is looking pretty uh, intense over here. Yeah, man. yeah. It's not that intense. Well, you just turned all of your colorless lands into... I will play a Castle Lachlan, tap two. Does it enter untap? Because I have a swamp. Gotcha. I will then tap two. I will cast a Grim Monolith. Mm. It taps for three colorless. I'll have to pay four to untap it because it doesn't untap during the untap phase. That's it, I ship it. Untap, draw for turn. Play a Taiga. Uppercut? Taiga, oh my god. I will tap Taiga for green, Ketri for blue, and play a Far Seek. I'm gonna search my library. Plains, Island, Swamp, Mountain card, put it under the battlefield tap. Look for a breeding pool. So the breeding pool comes in tap because of Far Seek. Sean, I will ship it to you, my friend. Okay, I will untap, upkeep draw, play this mountain as my land for turn. Tap for four using the Boreal Druid, and I will cast my commander, Raga Draga, Gorgut's boss. He's a 4-4. Each creature I control with a mana ability gets plus two, plus two. Whenever a creature I control with a mana ability attacks, untap it. Whenever you cast a spell, if at least seven mana was spent to cast it, untap target creature, it gets plus seven, plus seven, and gains trample until end of turn. Combat, I'm going to swing Ruby Daring Tracker. Have you played against a Prismatic Bridge much? Yeah. You're not worried about it? You have a lot going on. You're, got, you're about to like- He's gonna cast his commander next turn. Yeah, I know. I'll just continue swinging at you, Lynch, for now. Five, sorry. He gets plus two, plus two buff because I have a creature with power four or greater. And then he gets plus two, plus two because he is a mana dork. Five? For five, yeah, it's for five. And then because of Ragged Dragon's other ability, I get to untap Ruby when I attack because she's a mana dork. Gotcha. I, I just pass the turn after that. I'll upkeep, draw. I'll play a Haunted Ridge, which enters tapped unless I control two or more other lands. Three, four, five, six. So I'll tap out. My lands tap for any color, and I will cast a Consecrated Sphinx. Flying, four, six. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two cards. Yikes. Kill it with fire. I will pass the turn to you. Untap, upkeep, draw. All right, I'll draw two. <laughs> I'll play a Mountain for turn. If you have the option, kill it. Should hit him a little bit before he had a six, six, four, six, uh, Cody. It's four, six. Oh. oh. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and cast my commander. Mm -hmm. So the master multiplied is out. Time Lord Rogue, Myriad, Legend Rule doesn't apply to creature tokens you control. Triggered abilities you control can't cause you to sacrifice or exile creature tokens you control. I will then play a Lotus Petal, which I can sacrifice to add one mana of any color. Pass the turn. Draw. I'll draw two. Uh, uh, Consecrated Sphinx trigger. It's for Land Harbor. And I will go and tap out. And I'll go ahead and play Magus Lucia Kane. A spiritual leader. At the beginning of combat on my turn, I get to put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature. So she's in. At the beginning of combat, I'll go ahead and put a. My guy? And I can swing on him. Uh, wow. I'll go ahead and put it on her. <laughs> and, Probably a good idea. Second main, I don't have a play, so I'll go ahead and and turn and pass it to you. Even though it doesn't really do anything for your guy. I'll untap. I will draw. Drop two. It's kind of crazy. Sphinx triggering. Get old Sphinx. Uh, if you guys want to kill it now, it's so totally bad. okay by me. <laughs> All right, well, I am going to play this Yavamaya Cradle of Growth as my land for turn. So now we all have forests. 
I'm going to tap for two, and I will cast a Lightning Greaves. This is an equipment. A creature has haste and shroud, equips for zero. I'll pay two and cast a Priest of Titania. Is a 1-1 one, one elf. I believe it's actually an elf druid, but uh, it says it's an elf on here. You can tap it, add a green to your mana pool for each elf in play, play this ability as a mana source. So you have two elves. But it also counts all elves on the battlefield. So if anybody else has any elves, which they don't, move the greaves over to the Priest of Titania. Tap for two green from the Priest of Titania. Cast Up the Beanstalk as an enchantment. When Up the Beanstalk enters the battlefield and whenever you cast a spell with mana value five or greater, draw a card. So if that resolves, I will draw a card. I'm gonna drop two. Oh. I almost forgot about I that I knew one. you should have been four hitting him before he had him four or six. So you were the one warning two. everyone last time, but kill Vahan. Make sure Vahan doesn't get a chance to survive. Now the Vahan sad. has like 20 cards in hand. I will go to combat. I will swing Boreal Druid and Raga Draga Gorgut's boss at Manny, and I will swing Ruby Daring Tracker at Lynch. Ruby Daring Tracker will get the plus two, plus two buff, and then another plus two, plus two from the Raga Draga, making it a five, six. Raga Draga is a four, four, and Boreal is a three, three, because it's getting a plus two buff from Raga Draga. When they go to attacks, I will untap them. Sean, what did I do to you? I have a very strong feeling Vahan's gonna board wipe, and that's the only reason why I'm trying to get in damage where I can. Take five. Take the seven, going down to. I will then pass the turn after that. Upkeep. Draw. Cast the Sky Shroud Claim. Search your library for up to two forest cards, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Is there a response? No response. Sky Shroud? No response. How does he still need lands? Well, I only have three lands. lands. I can't really like win this turn. All right, so I'm gonna get a forest, Temple Garden, and I'll shock that. Dang, all that was for free? What mana did you use? Relax, man, relax, there it's go. tapped. Oh, there you it's go. Tapped. Then I'll play a Plains as my land for turn. I'll tap five and I'll cast the Prismatic Bridge. It reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or Planeswalker card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I will pass to you after that. I will untap everything but my Grim Monolith, upkeep draw. I'll draw two, and just to answer your question from before, Manny, now after that two, I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 cards. 13 cards in Lucky number. Man, we have a mission, Lynch. Kill it's just, Vahan. It's Sorry, just, Vahan. I don't accept Sean your apology first and foremost. Sean is just whomping on me right now. Well, I mean, that, that can stop. I thought he was gonna board wipe and he didn't, so there's at least one more round. I'm gonna pay three and I'm gonna attempt to equip the commander's plate to the master multiplied. Does that resolve? He has multiplied. Yeah. Okay. Multiplication. So now I will go to combat. I will swing with Master Multiplied, which will give me two other myriad token copies of him. Three plus three, seven, six. So the seven, six coming your way, four, three, and a four, three. Is that commander damage? I don't think so no, because they're no, copies. So that's only, only have to be, this is commander damage. Yeah. It has so to be from the, the actual OG commander. Guy. Do you have any effects? Are you blocking? No, man, I'm gonna take the, the hit. I, I'll declare no blocks. Yeah, yeah, I'm not blocking, obviously, because I can't. Uh, four, I'm four. four, yeah. Yep. It's important to now note, normally myriad tokens would be sacrificed mm -hmm. or exiled, but his ability allows me to keep them because I can't sacrifice or exile tokens based upon triggers or delayed triggers. They didn't get sacrificed initially because the legendary rule doesn't apply. So they won't get sacrificed. I'll move past my second main to my end step, and then I pass the turn to you, Manny. I will go ahead and untap, draw. And you didn't have to discard because you have fucking Reliquary Tower? The Reliquary Tower is pretty hey, great. No, turn one. guys, come turn on. This is why I'm keeping Ghost Quarters, Trip Mine, Wasteland, like I'm, mm. Land Destruction's here. Ghost Quarters, With shit like Tabernacle and fucking Glacial Chasm, like you need land destruction. I tend to go with Ghost Quarter a little bit over. I mean, Strip Mine's the end all be all, but yeah. you just, Ghost you Quarter need, is need, need just in case stuff. you need to get a land or something, like it's obviously dependent on the deck. You know, it can replace itself in a way. I think I need to make some big plays here. I'm getting smashed and there's threats everywhere. Go ahead and tap a four, Central and Harbor and a Breeding Pool. Be a spiritual leader. I'm gonna be the spiritual leader right now. I'm gonna play un 
Inbound Flourishing. It's an enchantment. Whenever you cast a permanent spell with a mana cost that contains an X, I double the value of X. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell with an activated ability, if that spell's mana cost or that ability's activation cost contains X, I copy the spell or ability. I choose a new target. So X spells, I get to copy. So Unbound Flourishing comes in. I will go ahead and then tap the Spiritual Leader, producing two colorless mana. Tapping the Ketria Triome and the Taiga, so producing a total of four to play a Stone Coil Serpent. X being four. It has reach, trample, protection from multicolored. Stone Coil Serpent enters the battlefield with X11 counters. So I tapped for four. Unbound Flourishing will now bump this up to eight. I will also get a copy of it from Magus Lucia Kane, which will also come in with eight. This copies this. This doubles the counters. Exactly. Your well. board wipe would be good right now that Sean keeps talking about. I, I guess it would. I literally just need to protect. I don't really need the Sphinx too much more. Yeah, I think you've drawn enough <laughs> cards with your shit. Now, at the beginning of combat, guys, Magus Lucia's first ability will trigger. Put the additional counter on the original Stone Coil Serpent. Goes up to nine. Can't, he's got protection for multicolored creatures. And I get to put an extra counter. That'll go on her. These are summoning sick, so I'll move to end phase and pass the turn. I will untap, upkeep, and draw. I'll draw two. Jesus, it hurts every time. Every time. <laughs> Interestingly enough. Well, even though I would love to be able to just swing one more time, I get my board wipe here to be pretty important. Yeah, that would be pretty important. I'm going to play my land for turn. It will be a Cinder Glade. We'll enter the battlefield tapped unless I control two or more basic lands. And I only have one basic land. Jeez, where's a Blood Moon? <laughs> oh God, no. I run Blood Moon in here, just so you know. Not good. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Main phase, I'm gonna move <laughs> the Lightning Greaves over to Ragged Draga, which I should have done last turn, but I forgot. I'm going to go to combat, swing at Lich. <laughs> You gonna let him run away with this? No, I'm not You're running not away. No, no I can't team even ups, win. No team ups here. We got. There's a big problem there, dude. Seventeen cards in hand, and with the prismatic trigger. I know, but he can block anything that I throw at him. I'm going to actually swing all three at you, Lynch. I'm sorry. I'm Dangerous actually the right least now. threat objectively on the state because this guy's going out of control. Exactly. Got, this guy's going to spawn a bunch of new guys. I'm not creating two eight eights. I'm not two eight eights. He's going to untap and do like X spell craziness with two reach, eight eights. Reach trample, You're going to do what? myriad craziness with your commander. Reach trample. He's going to untap and do craziness. So I'm in my corner over here. I love to be able to do something to him if I could, and I think we should still. But in the meantime, I'm going to swing at you. You swing with everything. You would get through. One thing would one thing would die. Yeah, but I'd like to would be keep knocking him down a little all bit. of my things. Yeah. But what if he board wipes? You keep saying he's going to board wipe. I didn't last turn. What if he doesn't? Because he turn. wanted to still draw into more win cons. He may still board wipe depending on what he flows with prismatic. He's drawn as much cards as he probably needs with, with yeah, that. Seven. More mana. So how much am I taking? I on attacks, these guys will untap. I'm attacking you for three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And ten, eleven. I will go to second main phase. You should have hit him the first time when we talked about it with You're that right. original set. I should have. You're right. I will pass the turn. All right. I will untap. It feels like the sports state's gonna blow up any second. I do finally get my first prismatic trigger. So I'm gonna reveal cards from the top until I get a planeswalker or a creature. Ramos. Not a bad Oh, hit. that's really good. The rest go at the bottom. Ramos is a 4-4 flying. Whenever you cast the spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Ramos for each of that spell's colors. Then I can, if it has five, I can remove five 1-1 one, one counters from it and add two of each color, so 10 total, to your mana pool. Activate this only once each turn. Pretty good. Then I'll draw. Yeah. Tap five. This is not good, guys. It's, it's pretty good. So we'll cast Joda. Joda is a 5-5. Legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. Whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost, put the rest at the bottom of your library in any random order. So kind of a cascade for legendary. But because it is five colors, I put five counters so I get five here. So then what I will do, I'll remove five. So I'll get 
two of each color to my mana pool. I still That's have. so There's good. nothing I could Not have done gosh. about that. I'm gonna play Dream Root Cascade as my land for turn. I have 10 mana floating. Two color. of each color. Okay. I'll use two blue, two green. I'll tap a soul ring and the reliquary tower and I'll cast Coma, Cosmo Serpent. So when I cast him. So this, dirty. <laughs> so this will get two counters from the cast and then I'll cascade the legendary cascade with Joda. So it's less than seven. So it's six, six or less legendary. Oko, six, two red, white and two black. So when I cast here, I'll get two more here because of its two colors, but I can only use this once per turn. So I have <laughs> six here. All right, so I will take three from the six and I'll cast Sise. A couple things are gonna happen, Sise is so right? Cause it's legendary. Trigger Ramos. So I'll have a trigger here and then I'm gonna have a trigger on Joda. Sise gets plus one, plus one for each color among other legendary permanents you control. So it would get an automatic seven total, five, five from these both having any of the, all the colors. And then I can pay one of each color, search your library for a legendary permanent card with converted mana cost less than Sisei's power, put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Yeah, it's 2-2, two, okay. two. it gets 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, I, I used the mana that I used here, it was one white. So I can tap this because I have three floating. I had six, so I minus three. One white and then one each of black and red. So I have one white, one black, one red, and then I have these two, so I can use this. Okay. This will go to five. And you'll cascade for a two drop? I don't believe I have a two drop legendary, but. I don't see May. It goes to it, I may cast it without, so. Let's oh, just. You may cast, but yeah. I'm saying, I think you still have to go through. Yeah, so you yeah. still have to go through the cascade. Wow, two bolosses in a row right there. I don't think it's I It's only a creature or planeswalker? Any. No, it's any legendary. Everybody knows that card. Two Oko's in your deck. Felwar's throwing Arcane Signet. That's you guys didn't see that last answer. one. Uh, no, no. GG. So no, chromatic I'll idea. fail to to go. The, you fail to find the Jota trigger. I saw your five other soul rings in there. Yeah. All right, so this is two plus seven with the ability plus one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is an 11 11. And then so I have the remaining three I can pop and I'll use these two. So I'll use it. I can search my library for a legendary permanent card with converted mana less than Sisei's power. Uh, yeah. I think he's gonna. Um, Bolas? No. no, Avacyn. Yeah, of course. Avacyn. Avacyn. Of course. Yeah, they're all big, fun creatures. There's no little dorks in here. Why are you trying to say little dorks, bro? Just because I got some mana dorks over here? Yeah, man. What, what's wrong with dorks? They're so underwhelming when I get a prismatic trigger and I get like a solemn. Dude, my four <laughs> feet are like, so scary right now. Wow. My eight eights aren't even that okay. scary right now. Coma coils? Coma coils are gonna come out. Coma coils scary. are gonna be fun, yeah. All right, I'll have to hit Maggie's. Fun, yeah. Well, hold on, hold on, Mahan. Let's, let's talk. Do you wanna make a deal? Let's talk. Deal or no deal? You are targeting my Maggie's wanting to target my Magus. You are. I'm thinking about okay. it, yeah. So this is like 13, this is nine, five, 14, this is 11, and they're all indestructible. So I'm not worried about the swing. I'm not really worried about it here. I'm mostly worried about a potential X spell that can just hit my life. That's my logic. That's yeah. pretty solid. It's pretty airtight. <laughs> you can block Sorry. all my, my three, four, fours. Yeah. <laughs> my yeah. Swing well. I did just call my guys dorks. Yeah, I know. All right. You're the only one who can hit his life total right now. And I, I am. I'm going to hit your, I thought, I'm going to hit your life total. Just know. It just makes know sense. Know I believe That it's coming at you. <laughs> I believe it's so the one thing that's okay. not indestructible so on your side right now. It just loses all abilities. <laughs> yeah. Becomes an elk. So it'll be an elk. Becomes an elk, but you keep the uh, two plus one plus one. Yeah, you'll get the counters. So we'll just do this. This is the elk. I've been elked. This is a plus one. Oko's ability is target artifact or creature loses all abilities and becomes a green elk creature with base power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. So degrading. Don't have any other plays as nothing has haste. Pass the turn to you, Lane. Holy shit. All right, I will untap. On your upkeep, I will get- Coma coils. A coma, coma, coil. coma coils. I don't have the actual coil tokens. What? I don't, as they're like 10 bucks each. So I'll use a little <laughs> elephant. Coma yeah. has a lot of text. It's a 6-6, six, six. the spell can't be countered. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a 3-3 three, three blue serpent creature token named Coma's Coil. And that's each upkeep, so it's gonna trigger on everyone's turn. Then I may sacrifice another serpent, choose one. Tap target permanent, its activated abilities can't be activated this turn, or Coma Cosmo Serpent gains indestructible until end of turn. It's worth noting that you can use this ability on planeswalkers. I will draw for turn. I will draw two. 
We're in a tight spot. We're in a real tight spot. I mean, I think I need to just do this. I'm gonna tap four, sacrificing the Lotus Petal, and I'm gonna cast the One Ring. Indestructible, oh. when the One Ring enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you gain protection from everything until your next turn. You can swing at them all you want. Fair enough. All and right. then you can deal with me after. This is for hitting me. <laughs> He's coming at you now. You should sack your thing and tap the tap He can tap it in response. The One Ring, legendary artifact, indestructible. When the One Ring enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you gain protection from everything until your next turn. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life for each burden counter on the One Ring. Put a burden counter on the One Ring, and then draw a card for each burden counter on the One Ring. It currently has no. I will go ahead and tap it. I will put a burden counter on the One Ring. I will then draw a card. Still not a land. I don't know what else to do except for to swing. How big is Ramos? Nine? No. Plus. Nine plus one, two, three, four, five. Fourteen. Fuck. Fourteen. All right. I'm going to swing yeah. all, everything at Sean. Well, I had to swing because they're all going to have myriad triggers. You can still get through with this guy. No. And get 14. Ramen. Ramos. <laughs> Ramen. 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 Ramen the artifact, dude. <laughs> and then Ramos triggers going to happen. Oh, shit. There's a, here's a coma coil for you. Oh, what? I know, can't believe I randomly had one in there. I have three myriad triggers that will happen. Master makes two. multiplied will make two mm -hmm. going at each of you. The second one also makes two going at each, going of, at each of you. <laughs> and then the third one also makes two going, going at, at each, each of you. Of so everyone has three four fours coming at them, which isn't gonna be hard for you to block. Yes. Or you to block. Right, right, okay. And then my master multiplied though does have protection from all your colors because all your stuff has a green. You can't block the first one, but you can block the two, four, threes. Lynch, what have I done to you? I don't, I don't know, you it. took me to 16. Why? What do you think I you I don't done understand to me? Yeah. this aggression. You took none of my counsel. When there's so much going you on didn't. over here. Well, I am sending, by attacking you, I am still sending. I understand. Three, four, threes to their I, death. Yeah. Let's do blocks. Let's do blocks. Okay, so I am, I'm blocking two of them. See so here. these two are gonna die, yeah. you can take four. And I'm gonna take four. Okay, these, these will die. So 15 damage coming at me, huh? I'm not gonna block. You're not blocking? I'll take 15, seven of it being commander damage. Yep, so you're at 21. You go to 21. I will block all three. And then again, because of the legendary rule and because he doesn't let me sack them, they don't sack. I then pass the turn and with my one ring protecting me for at least one turn. All right, I'll go ahead and untap. This is when I need a Hail Mary plan. So on your upkeep, I'll get one more coma coil. And when you draw, I'll draw wow. two. You need a board wipe, board okay. wipe. All right, you're going to draw, okay. And well, I mean, a board right. wipe doesn't work. We need a farewell. Stay protect, alive. yeah, protect myself and stay yeah. alive a little bit longer. So I'm gonna tap for five here and I'm gonna play Perforos Bronze Blooded. He's indestructible, and as long as your devotion to red is less than five, Perforos isn't a creature. Unfortunately, right now he's not active. Other creatures that I control do have haste, and I can tap two colorless and a red, and I can put a red creature card um, or an artifact creature card from my hand onto the battlefield, sacrificing it at the beginning of the next end step. So Perforos is out. Second main phase, I'm gonna go ahead and play a land for turn. I'll play the Rockfall Veil. I am now going to wish for the best. So I got three blockers. Up. Hopefully I can survive this turn. Sean, be our hero. <laughs> Remember, um, I have protection. You can't hit me. Oh yeah, that's oh, right. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, I know he just said earlier that you could hit me, but that, that actually won't work right now. <laughs> you can't hit him. I mean, you could try. All right, untap. All right, so upkeep, draw. I'll spawn another little homie coil, and on your draw step, I'll draw too. Gross. Yeah, that Consecrated so, has done work. Thanks for not killing it, guys. I'm going to tap for three, and I'm gonna cast Viridian Joiner. It's a mana dork, a one, two. I can tap it to add an amount of green to my mana pool equal to its power, which is three at the moment. Because of Ragged Drag, it gives it a plus two buff. I'll move to equip the Greaves onto it, yes? Yep. Yep. I don't really know what you have, but let's play it safe. I'll sack this guy in response to your equip, and I'll tap it down. Tap the Joiner? Yeah. Okay. Well, the, so it, would it still, still has the boots, yeah. yeah. The boots you can unequip it, yeah. So I'm gonna move the Greaves over to the Priest of Titania. Bam. I'm surprised you're not responding with that. What's the point of responding? I'm going to tap for two, this for three, so five, six, seven, and I will cast Worm Calling. It's a sorcery, it has buyback of two and a green, and it's for green and X. I'm paying seven, so I'm paying the green, and then the other green, and two for buyback, which is four, and the X is three. And it says, put an XX green worm creature token into play. So I'm making a three, three green worm creature so token, the and then I get Ragga Dragga Trigger that will untap a creature and give it plus seven, plus seven until end of turn. Turn. 
and trample. Untap target creature? Target creature. So you can't target your homie, I for can't example. target my homie. Got it, yeah. okay. I'll choose Ruby, the Daring Tracker, to untap and give a plus seven, plus seven. But I also make a three, three green worm creature token and get to draw a card from Beanstalk, up the Beanstalk. Yeah. Did you draw from the Beanstalk? No, I draw from the Beanstalk. I'll draw two. So now this has plus seven, plus seven, and trample until end of turn. This plus is a good way of buying a turn. I did, it bought me yeah. a turn, yeah. And then I'm gonna have one turn to at least try to do something. It's, that's a strong possibility. I don't think there's anything I can do. Because he Maybe can so. double block and kill it? He can just block it. I can't attack you, and he can double block and kill it. Move the Greaves back over to Ragged Dragai, I guess. Keep my boy somewhat protected <laughs> in some way. You pass? Yeah, yeah, I pass. I'll untap. So I got a couple upkeep triggers, but I'm gonna do the prismatic trigger first until I get a creature or a planeswalker. Hey, Gisela. Yo. Oh. So good. <laughs> I like Gisela. I'll draw. Well, I, I get this too, of course. It's a coil. Mm -hmm. My myriad doesn't work if there's only one player. I'll pay five. I'll cast Doom Scar. Destroy all creatures. Ouch. All creatures? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tap for a green mana and Vahan say, I hate your deck right now. <laughs> All right, so all my myriad die, and my... Okay, we'll, we'll do a fun play. All of these <laughs> plays are so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to take five out of here, so I'll float 10. Use two green, I'll use six here, so I'll leave four of them. I'll use two green, and then uh, one of each color, two white. So two green, two white, one of each color, that gives five plus black. So that's six. So I have four remaining. I will cast Vorinclex. So you have four remaining mana? Monstrous Raider, yeah. It's gonna trigger a couple things, so it'll do one on here, and then I'll get this, the Jota trigger, even though that's not the purpose of that, but we'll see what we get. Lithoform engine. Cool. But what I'm gonna do afterwards, I'll search again. I don't need to shuffle because I'll pay five. So I'll use the remaining, I have one red floating there. So one of each color. One red floating? Yeah. Out of four, so you're using three. Three, and then I'll use two. These tap for any color. And I'll use Sisse's ability. No, no, I'll no, get no. Nickel minute. Bolas Dragon God. And then this the way, most. bypass Lynch. So it comes in, and when it comes in, it comes in with eight counters. But so that gets six. doubled, right? Yeah, it gets doubled up because of Voin Clex. So the minus eight here, right. each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game. That's its minus eight? Yeah. Oh! oh. Fortunately oh. for me, <laughs> I did cast- I thought I was safe! Almost. What? Because I cast oh. Warren Clex prior, it comes Say in four. with double counters. The so it Duma. usually comes in with four, but it does go to eight. Oh. And Did anyone have a response to this? You got responses? I uh, I got nothing. You're not even swinging. Uh, I thought that would be the swing swing though, a little bit more interesting, unique way to win, not just with the swing. I, so you're and your eight. protection, I can't kill you, so oh, yeah, I wanted to win this turn, and this is one of the ways that I can pull that off. Okay, so wait, how does it get around the ring? So because the ring says he has protection, which means I can't target him or do any damage to him, this says each opponent who doesn't Ooh. control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game. So I'm able to kind of bypass Let me check. Let me my see. legendary Let me artifact see. doesn't I don't wow. see one there. No. Wow. I have a legendary artifact. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It's not a creature. So a I have no responses. So I'm, so you're minus, I'm minus eight. eight. I sadly so that's going to go to the graveyard. Yeah. So this will sack. Go to the graveyard because I did minus eight and I the have ability no will trigger. Permanent creature. I have a legendary enchantment, but, but that's it's not a creature it. yet. Yeah. You have no. I have walkers. nothing. So I guess oh that's it. Gosh. We just lost. <laughs> so all those creatures and Gisela and Avacyn. Just when you thought I was gonna Coma. win with all my attacks, I did a little. I, I can't. I can't Surprise. even be mad at you right is now. This and like, the Jota. What kind of journaling is this? It's the I'm type that journal. lets you win. <laughs> oh my god. Journal. Honestly, I'm okay. That's the best kind that, for me. Yeah. I did. So you I just mean, have you a know, lot of different win cons in this deck. Yeah, well, winning is obvious. It was an obvious one, right? Oh, okay, he wins, but I couldn't kill you this turn. Correct. So that means I'd have to give you another turn, and I didn't want to do that. Yeah. I wanted to just win wow. this turn. So this is one of the ways that I'm able to Which do is that. great, because that's what the one ring is meant to do, and that's why yeah, it's so protected. ubiquitous, is that yeah, it's like, you can right. go on every deck, and then when you really need it at the last minute to just have at least one time to untap, it usually, 90% of the time, can do that for you. And, and we were talking, you didn't have any kind of way to do that, really, like, that you could think of. No, I could have yeah. done life loss, too, right? So if, yeah. like, Grey Merchant or something that, you know, you lose 
16 but life. That does to everybody. Which is, yeah. Or to yeah. everybody, yeah. 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 That's yeah. not targeting you as you have protection. Yeah. I have to say, Vahan, I think that's the first time I've ever seen that Nico Bolas win a game. I've never seen it all before. Yeah, I can't even be mad at you. I, me right neither, now. yeah. Oh, like, I really I've want seen, to be mad at you, I've but seen I can't. This deck was, play a thanks bunch for of letting time. me go bananas with this deck. It is why I, mean, I was yeah. like, you should have hit him first. Ah, was open. Shot, I mean, shot, really? Shot. Look, let's all say you attacked this. me and I didn't even block. I would be at four life. Exactly, less. Like, like, what what feel better than he was in his 20s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, I feel worse because I actually, I think you I could have done the Viridian Joiner thing that I was trying to do a turn earlier before you got Coma out. And of course, it's like always my luck that like everything else on this board wouldn't have stopped me from doing that except, except for, for Coma. coma. Yeah. So like you, biggest, like you actually yeah. had the, you were able to follow up with the one card that could have stopped all the things that I was trying to do because I could have just bought back the, the Worm Calling, cast it and just made a wow. ton of three threes, yeah. drawn, Eventually, like gaining a bunch of mana and then and doing potentially, more. you would have been able to do yeah. that. Okay, how important sequencing is. Very like nice. sequencing, so many times, if you get greedy and you don't keep that counter spell or you don't keep, yeah, the whole time the reason I kept holding one black open was because if you guys did board wipe, I could have saved it. Mm. Oh. Yeah, but then, that's one of the newer ones too. I like yeah, that. Yeah, one. one of the newer, not dead after all. But then I was like, man, I just have to get the one ring out there to see if I can at least hang in there for one more yeah. turn. It's supposed to give you an untap. I you did. Know what I mean, you're yeah. walking on the razor's edge, but like you're and usually the on the side of like you know being okay. But you know, very clever to have the ability to like know that in your deck, like. I'm pretty sure one of these bolosses is nasty enough that it could do something that could just yeah. outright end the game. For yeah, people. get rid of the Teferi's you know? protection. And I've seen, the... again, I've seen this deck a lot, and this is the first time I've seen you win with more creatures than Planeswalkers on the battlefield. But not use them at all. And win. then still win with a Planeswalker. <laughs> like, that to yeah. me is such a great combination. We I think been the, able real, swords. the real MVP was Consecrated Sphinx. This Coming was amazing. Out, yeah, yeah, that got, me, oh, yeah, that got me a not lot of Not being able to oh, answer that, not, just, just yeah. fill up your hand. Um, that's why I kept like worrying about a board wipe. And then like you finally did, but it didn't really just so matter you know, I didn't. Point. I didn't even have a board wipe. That you were you were assuming or wondering, but I didn't. It would have been really, and if I had it, I would have played it. But I wouldn't I, have even, even played it. Even when you were flipping, I saw you go through the gamut of board wipes. That yeah, yeah. The Doomscar I saw in The Doomscar, yeah, but when I shuffled, that's why I was. No, that's draw why it was again. Like, this thing uh, propelled me to get a lot of the cards, sure. but it was really Ramos that enabled that one big play because old ramen. I had uh, old ramen, Artifact yeah, because I had Joda, and because of Joda, I was able yeah. to get five counters. That turn with the, the one two with these, and yeah. then be able to cast like yeah. something else to cascade so with this. So dirty, like there was it was a lot just of so good synergy good. with the yeah, dirty in like a good cards, way. Yeah. I mean, well, dude, that was a crazy way to see win, man. Thanks, I've never man. seen that bolas get ultimated. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, that was impressive. Our first, that was great. It's a rare. Occurrence. Yeah, I don't really get to do it. Uh, yeah. It's just yeah, so thanks. funny, like this board state right here, and and you didn't win by swing, yeah, <laughs> swinging. Yeah, we lost. Out. We lost to a planeswalker. Old just team. like looking at everything out here, it's just like yeah, he double the damage. I wanted to it's throw like, in a twist more, at the end. More you, know? X, you guys were yeah. expecting the the swing. You can copy kill. the ability. Like yeah, he could have just swung, <laughs> killed you guys, and then ultimated. It's like, and so crazy. He's like I'm just gonna kill you all the same way. Which I think is the better play, right? I think so. Because you just got rid of everyone. Avison. Dude, Avison's such a bitch. It was fun. Thanks for Dude, letting Avison's me. Avison's uh, so good in Gisela. Crazy. It's ridiculous. Appreciate you guys. Dude, thanks for coming again on the of course, show, man. Smiley. Thanks Sean. for having Always me. Man. Uh -huh. Thanks, Dude, guys. Sean, good brother. game. Good game. Good game. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Good game yeah. Thanks for letting me play that. Hey home. guys, every other Friday, check out I Hate Your Deck. We'll keep bringing you more spicy episodes and with salty players. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get this out of my and face. If you can support us on Patreon, it's what allows us to keep making these episodes and keep bringing you more spicy content. Till next time, peace. If you really want to support I Hate Your Deck, there's a lot of ways to help support us. Number one way is through Patreon. Patreon is a great place where you get to join our community. We have a Discord where we play a lot of magic with our friends. And there's such a community of people from around the world in our Discord. So if you want access to our deck list, do you want to play magic with a lot of people from all over the world and interact or help brew your decks, the I Hate Your Deck Discord through Patreon will help you get all that done. Hey, if you've been liking I Hate Your Deck, hit the like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notifications when we have new episodes coming out. And we also have bonus episodes. If you want to see those bonus episodes that were too hot for YouTube, join our Patreon to check that out. I Hate Your Deck would like to thank our sponsor, No Pulp Media. It's where we're shooting right now, and it's where a lot of people come to record music or do podcasts. So if you're looking to do that, check out No Pulp Media here in Long Beach.
Hey, it's time for the random Patreon shoutouts. I'd like to take both RT Destroy, Eric Martinez, and Case. Thanks, y'all. If you want a shout out, you need to be a tier four or tier five patron where we give shout outs. Now, we love all of our patrons, but it's just one of the perks of being a tier four or tier five patron. Without you patrons, we wouldn't be where we are today and we wouldn't be able to keep making content. So thank you so much for helping us make this show a reality. And we're really excited to keep bringing you great content for the years to come. I can't wait to be able to bring my son on the channel once he gets old enough, let me tell you. I hate your deck. Wizards of the West Coast. Tapping out and slinging spells. Wizards of the West Coast. Tapping out and slinging spells. deck. Wizards of the West Coast. I hate your deck. Wizards of the West Coast. I hate your deck. Join the I Hate Your Deck Patreon exclusive Discord to get the various benefits and be able to play Commander daily with people from around the world in our global community. I Hate Your Deck.